Actually, this year's larger than ever before. Uh, last year we were at about 1,000 lots, so we've added about another 500 lots plus another day. So last year was three days, before that was two days, this year we're four days. So it's a big step up for us, which makes it a, that much more of an exciting event for us. Yes, it's quite incredible for the age if you think that this was originally fabricated in the 70s and early 80s. It's in amazing condition. It's been very carefully cared for by a collector for the last 15 to 20 years. It's been in his personal collection. But the, the suit is made up of different components. So the tunic is actually a tunic that was used in Superman 3. The belt and then the trunks and the leggings were labelled and used for Superman 2. And then the cape itself was actually made for Superman 1 and then repurposed and reused for Superman 2. So during the, the productions themselves, as the budgets got less and less between the films, they actually reused the costumes throughout them to, to save on money. So let me just show you the cape here. So the cape itself was made for Superman 1 and then repurposed for Superman 2. And for Superman 1, it was actually used with a harness. So these were cuts that were slit into the cape, which had then been stitched up and re-sewn when it wasn't required for harness work for Superman 2. So this is a really special first edition, uh, very rare, they only made about 500. Uh, the key identifier for a first edition is the serial number on the front. As you can see it starts with a 1. Uh, interestingly, she's also, the author is also referred to as Joanne Rowling rather than JK Rowling. And then on the back we have a little spelling error of philosopher. There are a number of different things that collectors are looking for when they're sort of understanding where, where the value should be for something and how much in demand it's going to be. So it's how popular the film is for starters, you know, was it a big successful blockbuster movie? How much was it seen on screen? Was it worn by a principal actor or, or even used as a hand prop by a principal actor? But a lot of it comes down to the nostalgic value for the collector as well. It's the eye of the beholder. What's the experience that they had maybe as a youth that they were trying to revisit? Absolutely. When we get items into us and they've got wear and tear from production, you know, if they're a little bit sweaty, if they're a little bit worn, if they're a little bit torn and damaged, if we can then match that up on screen, that's a process that we call screen matching and that adds value. So we pause a frame of the film and match up that wear and tear to the artefact itself and that adds to the provenance. So music is a brand new category for a prop store this year and I'm really excited to see what's actually come into us on consignment. I think one of the headline pieces is Noel Gallagher's guitar from the Be Here Now album. It's a Gibson Les Paul Silver Sparkle Florentine. It's a custom guitar that was made specially by Gibson for Noel Gallagher and gifted to him. And it was he was using that for the whole of the Be Here Now album recording, but also the world tour as well. So it's a really heavily featured guitar.
So the economy is tough for a lot of people right now, but it's very interesting. We've seen this similarly in 2007 and 2008 when we had the big financial crash, but actually where there's volatility in the markets, people look for fixed assets and items like these to invest their money into. So they take it out of stocks and shares, they take it out of the currency markets and actually put it in something that's more tangible. So we're seeing great success with our movie prop and costume auctions.